Silence. Pana Anyon Siako, representative aspiring district number five. Program marking the public declaration of membership to the LPP. Silence Pana Anyon Siako, representative aspiring electoral district number five. And this program is starting about this time. Invocation by Rabbi, Rabbi Ebe G. Harris, Senior Pastor Peter Phoebe. Thank you. Please welcome him on stage. Very good. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Amen. I am now the senior pastor of Delta Colorado Higher Praise Christ Mission Fellowship Phoebe. Before the invocation, if you have your pen, people are going to get down this verse. Joel 2, Joel 2, 25. I will repay you what the years the locusts have eaten. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. Think about Joseph's story. His brethren were so jealous of him, they sold him into slavery. All the young men, his age, no doubt, were out having a good time, enjoying their lives. But Joseph was confirmed living in a foreign land, having to work all the time. It was unfair. Once, yet Joseph, being was caused by somebody as poor choices and bad attitude. But God saw that injustice somehow, some way, God can make up all those years. That's what he did for Joseph. Genesis 41. Even through Joseph, he spent 30 years in slavery and in prison. God made it all up to him. And he came out, promoted, increased. He was now in position of honor. He was a prime minister. Second in command, put it to Pharaoh because Joseph kept the right attitude. God brought him out much better than he was before. You can carry this home. God can turn it around. God can turn it around. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you. You are the God of Shetra, Misha, and Abednego. You are the God of Joseph. Lord, thank you for the life, for this bright and beautiful day, for the breath that you have given to us. We thank you for our son, our father, Honorable Bongo, that you were able to bring it out far. Thank you for your traveling mercy. We commit this unique and historical occasion into your hands. We pray that, Lord, your will be done and not our will. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
or can turn it around. Thank you, uh, Pastor Heron. And can we please give him a very big hand of the Lord? It is possible that God can turn things around, right? Yes. I know. Really can do that. Um, we welcome on stage Mr. Francis and Francis Bellao, City Mayor of Sao City. Please welcome the mayor. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm sitting in the shoe of the city mayor. Now he is attending a funeral. So I'm speaking on behalf of Mr. Benawo. Platform guest, Oro Teo Komolo, Senate Bearer of the Nigerian People Party, other officials of the party, and officials, citizens, district. Swagwo District and Yibola. I am speaking on behalf of the city mayor. The city mayor, Francis Bellawo. As you people come, you all are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
the Father, and the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit.
his contributions to Liberia's poor march, his, the progress that Liberia has made. Madam Salif, when she became president of Liberia, she was looking for the best brains of Liberia to craft the idea for Liberia to be where it is today. And Honorable Kisala Siakou was one of those. So, ladies and gentlemen, without taking much of your time, I will ask that you please stand.
But before I go further, I didn't come alone. I asked all the followers, I said, this is the path I'm going to take. Would you like to embark on this journey with me? I don't want to go alone. So those of you who are here today, now sign up for membership. The documents have been put forward wow. to the national level. <laughs> Those people, they don't deserve to be in power. 
I am going into politics because I want to be part of the effort to change this country. So, 
the electoral district five, the two commissioners, the two powerful chiefs, the six player chiefs, all of them are elected. I'm quite sure people in the other districts will start asking them, why we get elected? So the change will start from Swap So that is the dream I have. That is what, why I'm going into politics. I'm not going in there to criticize anybody, to fight anybody. I'm going there to do things differently. So that when people see that I'm doing it differently, then they will ask my colleagues, why your friend doing it differently and you people are not doing that? And if people are working with him, because they appreciate the way he's handling the industry. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all of you coming. I will look forward to working with you on this project. So that come October 10th, Swap will get that celebration on January. <laughs> Maybe the president wants to listen to you. To see somebody who will say, okay, but if that's the case, 
Let me be safe and protect my character and go and have my defending to do. There are very few persons who can do that. Isn't it? Yes. Welcome, Honorable City Mayor. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. Thank you. When I heard about the Liberian People's Party, I told money, I said, I want to be part. Because this is an Italian era. It is very bad for you to be considered to be bad person. When you say you're working, you know that people are against you, you can know it. Nobody can tell you, but you can know that something bad is happening about you or against you somewhere. But when you are pure pressing, you walk in, you feel free. But who don't want to be part of booty now? Everybody <laughs> want to be part of booty, right? Yeah. Thank you. We don't want to hold you here for long. Let's go straight to our program. Uh, we say expression, expressions of support for the declaration of membership. Honorable Siaka has declared, he publicly he has declared his membership to the L. PP party, right? What are you saying? <laughs> he said he stay with Councillor Bongro, right? What's for you? So now, to answer that question, we get to everybody to answer it, right? Okay, so we will call on uh, Mr. Oh, mother. Government Bella, cheer lady. You got it. Answer the question. Answer the question for us. Thank you, Abba. Because I 
Thank you. We're moving slowly. So all of what we have said here, Honorable Siakon has just made a public declaration of the, uh, of the membership. So now, we would like to hear from the standard bearer of the party, but by this time, we will ask uh, Mr. Moni Doroyua to do the presentation of the standard bearer to the party. My good citizens of District No. 5, particularly Swapoku, Yigipola, and the rest of the places. I am Moni Saki Doloyua. I am also a representative hopeful for District No. 5. I am the smallest in size. And bigger in breed among all those that have I have come to the quality to change the dynamic. Before then, people used to come to quality and give myself running for the stadium. I feel that you enemy and enemy to you. Why am I here today? Two reasons. Two years ago, when we started to sell Consular Taiwan Bongo in Bong County, people felt we were joking. Let me recognize the chair today, Ms. Victoria Smoke. She started to do for Team Bongo in Bong County. And I'm a chairperson for Team Bongo in Bong County also, besides this department. We have worked for the years, and today we are proud to see a team, to see a group. Coming to us by the market we were selling. We are happy of that. Clap for yourself. <laughs> People felt we were joking and we told them that we had a, 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 somebody that coming to believe like be We We talking across the district, across the country. The people were joking, but today we are happy to join us so we can carry that real power. Thank you for that. <laughs> Liberia. 
that have the integrity icon. Cancel that bongo. The men who believe that Liberia needs to be belong to all the Liberians, not few group of people. So, Councillor and the team from Aurobia, on behalf of the team Bongo in Bong County, slash the LPP, we are also happy to welcome you on stage so we can join up to welcome our new members on the team. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Chairman Dr. Johnson Giblet, <laughs> the executive director of LPP and the campaign media man. So we are talking about the Money to the way the chairman of Team Congo introduced himself already. Along with the chair of one county, chair leader of one county. I see the chairman of the national union chairman of Team Congo, the young man from. I'd like to tell a little bit about him. Abenigo is from Grand Group, where the president of Liberia comes from. And he chose not to support the president, but to support me. In fact, because of me, I think because of me, he doesn't have a job, because he's a college graduate. And his uncle is the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, but he's all important. He stands for principles. Men do not live by bread alone, right? Yes. We have, where is Ephraim? Ephraim is one of the people standing there with the, his national chair of you for Gonglo. I have my sisters, my brother on stage, Councillor Philip Gonglo. He's a graduate of Gopher High School. <laughs>
Regional Coordinator of LPP and Team Gonglo for Lima Lofa and Bob County. I'm happy to be here today. Very happy. On this Saturday, on a market day, on a day that so many funerals are going on, you chose to be here. Big sacrifice. <laughs> On behalf of the National Chairman and the Executive Committee, you are very welcome to this party. And we believe, we strongly believe that you are a big catch. from this district, two people who have been working in the community, then that's a big, big win for the Liberian People's Party. <laughs> and the person who will finally be representing LPP from this district would be based on the hard work of that person. <laughs> the people who are coming to LPP are people who are dedicated people who are prepared to change Liberia's story for the better. <laughs> when I heard Salah speaking and Money Delaware, I didn't have to come here because they were saying what I was saying. This country is a naturally rich country. God gave us a very rich country. Better than most countries in the world. Rich soil. Under the soil, God gave us a very fertile soil. You can just throw things and grow them, they grow by themselves in this country. The oranges and the guava, the plums you have all around. Nobody planted them around the town. You just ate them through the seed, the town of growing. It doesn't happen in many countries. Then God bring us ring fall, it falls. I travel around the world, I travel around Africa, where I hear people complaining when it rains, I say, hey, you don't know what God has done for us. In some countries, it's not two, three years, no rain. In Liberia, it rains almost everything. So this is a rich country, this is a gift that God gave us. Then under the soil, we have diamonds. We have gold, we have iron ore, we have bauxite, we have uranium. Even a sand here, they can make glass out of it. Yes. Before the war, there was a glass factory in Ghana. So we cannot say, oh God, why you gave us this poor country? No. We have chosen to be poor. Because on the election day, we choose beds of rice, money, liquor. And fought into office people who are not qualified, people who don't love the country, people who are greedy, very arrogant, and ignorant. The result is suffering. Because there is no way that you can take your brand new car that has mechanical problem and give it to a, a carpenter to fix and expect that the car will be fixed. This is what Liberians do. And then they complain, God, why are we suffering? We bring suffering on ourselves on election day. Because of short term benefit. We have to change it. I've gone to over 320 towns in Liberia for the first time in the history of Liberia. 
I want to go and see the conditions under which Liberians are living. To experience those conditions because I want to change Liberia's story. <laughs> You cannot change a story that you don't know. Everywhere in Liberia today, hard men, everywhere, from Kimba to Kimba, they've complained to me, because they all over their hard men all over. I say, change, I want, I'll change a story. I'm a lawyer. I will start the hard man business in this country. <laughs> What has happened? Because people go into government and they steal and nothing happens to them. After two, three months in government, they start building four, five, three building houses. Nothing happens to them. And people must want to, people want to get into government. They, they feel they must get into government because that's the only way to get rich fast. So, even if they can't make it by themselves, by their conduct, by their track record, they go to wicked people called medicine men and say, I really want to be represented at all costs. I want to be minister at all costs. I want to be managing director at all costs. Whatever you do, I have to get this position. So I can go there and steal my own money. And then the medicine man say, just bring me him of my heart. Bring me him of my kidney. Bring me him of my apple. Bring me him of my this and that. And nobody can be living to bring those things. So, that's why I have the problem. I intend to stop the stealing government by stupid corruption from government. to join me to stop corruption in the government of Liberia. Because corruption is making our children not to go to school. There are some women who got five children, they can only afford to send one to school because of school fees. I will change that story. Every child in Liberia under my administration will go to school free of charge. <laughs> the money. Old people are dying. There are very few people who reach certainty in this country. And people are dying. Only because of corruption. The money that should put medicine in a hospital is put in people's pockets to build their houses with it. To the extent that JFK, the biggest hospital, biggest government hospital in Liberia, do not have medicine. The pharmacy there, you go there, nobody there is empty. You go to JMK, they only give you a piece of paper of prescription. Go across the road to the pharmacy. So, if the hospital in Monterey does not have medicine, then the one in Kipapas will have medicine. Then the one in Bogaza. Then the one in, 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 in Boji, in, uh, in Kambutan, in Ruba says. So, corruption. It's causing people to suffer. And it is corruption that is causing hard men who stop it. All of my administration, the president, and everybody who work in government salary will be on the internet. Amen. The representative, senator, just everybody, chief justice, everybody will put their salaries on the internet. The minister. So everybody can know how much you're making. By the time they start stealing, the community will know that they're stealing. Because when they start building, the people will know. And me, because of Congo, when I get that information, you are fired. You are, you are not only fired, you are fired and turned over to 
the Nigerian Anti-Corruption Commission will be prosecuted. They will handcuff you. Carry your code. When you come from court, when you are found guilty, you go to jail for five to ten years. The night is not sufficient. Then, no, the not sufficient. Because when you are stealing, your family enjoying that money. The money, the balance in the bank will take it from you. Your houses, you build, the cars you bought will take all from you by law. Then your family starts suffering. The one that will join from the air guarding money starts suffering. You think when five ministers are in jail for 10 years each and your family members suffering, any minister want to see again? Then we finish this with corruption. So we don't know where to see them. Will anybody go to medicine man to take him up to carry him up here to get a big job again? No. Because no more profit there. The heart will stop. The heart will stop. The we will stop the Hamed Bene, Bene, and we will stop corruption, and, and by doing so, stop Hamed Bene. There will be, Liberia will just be a great country because under my administration, children under the age of five, pregnant women, people 65 years old, all the old people in your country will go to the hospital free of charge. We have plenty of people. <laughs> We will pay children from junior high school to college to teach boys in the communities everywhere so that everybody who are not going to school in their country will know how to read and write and to be able to use telephone and all that. In two years, every librarian I will be open, they will know how to read and write because we will give tapping to the students to teach at least 10 people in the community every day when they come to school. <laughs> We are behind all the countries around us that are going ahead because of corruption. Less than one percent of this country is enjoying more than 99 percent of the income generated from the resources that God gave us here. Here's an example. The present pro term of Liberia last year his salary was $254,000, United States dollars. When you add in $30, $30,000 each and again, then are $284,000. Now, the other one is $2,000. Last year, $2,000. Now, the other one is $2,000. Now, last year, the country that can beg America, America on a present project salary last year was $103,000. Which means that the present project of Liberia made more than $60,000 more than the present project of the United States. So, we can't say money now yet. Money here, but a few people eating it, and the rest suffering. The same thing with the Speaker of Menopo in government. You think it makes sense for any official of government in Liberia to make higher salary than any official of government holding the same position in the United States of America? It makes sense? No. We beg America, America can give more money. There are other officials making more than American officials. Something is wrong. This is stealing from us. We have to stop it. That's why we have to put a salary on the internet so you can see it. And say, hey, the president, this salary too high. It's not good. When that corruption got out, we get a good rules. Because the money that government is supposed to use to buy yellow machine and put it in every county to keep the road meeting so that farm to market road, and all people can carry the goods to the market and sell. It's going in few people with pockets. So I will change that story. As President Liberia, I'll buy yellow machines and put in all the 15 counties so that the mean roads are meeting and more from the market roads are built. Yeah. 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 Our children today are riding on the motorcycles and some people go to Southeast Liberia. And, and buy put on other places to dig diamonds, to dig gold, and the only way they are living. But the young people need skills. They need to be mechanics. They need to be carpenters. They need to be builders. These are skills that you can live by and take care of your family until you get old. We will open free trade schools in the 15 countries for our children to learn trade. I was in Butch 
so last week in my country, in my country, where the war started. And I told them, we change the story. This is where the destruction of Liberia began. We'll make sure as president that the reconstruction and development and prosperity of Liberia will begin from good to who started the never want to go to so I said this means that a new day is coming because yes. I'm doing things a new way yes. I want a ball play where people were trained by the MPFL to carry the war in Liberia and I told them a ball play this place was used to train young people to use guns to kill people we will change that story. We will build a training center in Guapé to train our modern mechanics, capitals, builders, electricians, and all that. Different training for the development of Liberia will start in Guapé. We have to change Liberia's story. The story today that Liberia is a poor country is not the story that God wanted Liberia to, uh, to be told of Liberia. A better story is possible. And for me, I'm a lawyer. I can never be rich, but I can never be poor. Because going to work every day, at least I can find food. For the other two years, I'm not going to work every day because I'm making the sacrifice. But everywhere, the time I'm taking the road, all of what I do in the time I should be a cook. But it is a sacrifice that is necessary. Because when I was going to school in the 60s, the future that I hope for is not the future that I'm living today. We want a better future. So let's talk about safety on blocks. There are still places in this country where people can't even find blocks to sit on. They are sitting on the floor to them to go to school. <laughs> Still in this country, all of my Liberia today, all the government schools do not have teachers for all their classes. They got something called volunteer teachers. From Cape Town to Cape Palmas, most of the government schools got what they call volunteer teachers, which means the town people get, to get together and, 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 and then they get together and ask one or two people who finish high school, who travel high school to teach their children. Those people are not trained teachers, they are not going by the Ministry of Education and Curriculum, they can leave anytime they find a job or they go to school. So our young people, the students are not learning and the government does not care. We have to change that story. The role of government is to take care of the government, the people. Today, all our government officials are enjoying, and the people who give them power, power are suffering. They don't care. They have reduced Liberians to beggars. Yeah. Liberians are not beggars before they are proud. But how can you even work, make farm, and take care of yourself? If you are in Guadalajara, in Chicken, in Grand Cru, or if you are in Silicon, in Maryland, when you have your truck of build up or planting to bring it to Monrovia, you reach the mud that I saw just the other day, two months ago. And you come here, Ken. And you are stuck there for 10 days. Your car can't move. Your, your, your planting will get rotting. Your bitter ball will get rotting. And then you will not be able to come from whatever you sell. If you borrow the money from somebody to a higher truck, you will become poorer because you go now. The last month, the little money you have, your savings, you will take and pay the debt. And you don't have it. Somebody will take you to court. So bad road is making us poorer because this government has abandoned its duty to make us move freely. Freedom of movement is a national is a constitutional right. That our right to vote anywhere we want to go is written in the law. It is the duty of the government to make sure that we go everywhere. The government is not performing that duty today. So today, six months of the year, nobody can pass tapata. 
go all the way to the Bahamas for six months during the rainy season. The country is cut off due to negligence of duty. They don't care. And they are shameless in the tomb, my people. You all heard the other day, the speaker of the House of Representatives, Obama Chairman, was going to Plymouth City again to register. He didn't pass here. He passed, he, he, well, he passed here. But he went and passed to Lobato, went to Agro Coast, passed on the Poor Quota Road, then he went to the border of Liberia, I mean, of Agro Coast in Maryland, then he entered his own home. That's shameful business. Why the police were asking, uh, sir, what can, I, uh, what can I proceed here in your country? He said, I speak up. Uh, you came to the face of Africa, no, I'm going to my home. I'm passing through your own home. <laughs> Isn't that shameful? But if, if, if you're mad, if you're pressing your conscience, that is shameful thing. But they don't have shame. That the worst thing when a leader does not have shame, they can do worse things. Because you want good in now, you do good things for so the poor can like you, they can respect you. But when you have leaders in power who don't care, then that's terrible. How you go past your other poor country to go to your country? And you say you didn't. Instead of putting money to build, to fix the road, so everybody can ride. Can ride the road. Now what is happening? Right now, in fact, during the dry season, to come from Monero to Cape Town, there are two weeks. Unless they be on monopoly. It never used to happen that way. Their country was not as bad before, but I know in 1979, for example, I got on, on in a taxi in Kipama. Six o'clock in the morning. By nine o'clock in the evening, I was in Monrovia. They can't happy this time. Yes. Because the government does not care. Now, the government that does not care, that the government here say in Bonkane area on this second term too. Eh? No. You want to get second term to that kind of government? No. I hear you. No. You know, second term is just a tomorrow woman. When you get a woman, that the time you show to impress the woman, right? You buy her clothes, you feed her, you buy her shoes, you buy her Gucci, everything. But right now, CDC is telling us, you know, our first time, all the things we say we were supposed to, we were going to do for you, we didn't do it. God just gave us second time, everything will happen. My auntie, the man approach you, the man engage you, he buy you one slipper. When you marry him, I tell you, buy you a slipper. Yeah, he get happy. Oh. Everything your car was poor. I carried three cars on the, on the road about a few months ago. I was just repairing cars going. Then, Sarin was coming behind me, ambulance. But the ambulance came past by me. I said, but the same person that car would die. <laughs> Human people could, run, could walk faster than the ambulance. Because the road, the Lofa road is so bad that ambulance can do natural road. And I was doing the dry season. So when you have bad road ambulance, meaningless. You can't do nothing. Because you will die in the ambulance. Ambulance will be able to run fast to take you to the hospital. But the government has made ambulance to be nothing in the rural area. So when they say the bad road medicine that just rose to Bishar houses in Monrovia, the road that present we are living on a pay. The one that Nathana Magui living on a pay. The one that is in the gym by the living on a pay. The one the pro present pro temple living on a pay. All the other ones that the poor poor living on a pay. That selective medicine for Rome. <laughs> Only for pictures. <laughs> so the poor can pick and choose. Only people with pictures. The poor people will play the plenty. They ain't get time for them. You know, the one they are eating, 
is enough. Let's start now, yeah? Yeah, we're at the vast point now. So, to put in the My sister, we got two of them from Bunkanea. My mom from the winter area. Oh, no, my mom from the She said, what she said? That I will not attempt to eat. Yes. And she said so? Yes. Oh, man, they not eat. <laughs> they chop it, they eat itself. <laughs> the other people were there before they ate them, but they used to leave some. This government not giving anything. They carry everything. And they're making people to suffer. Today, they know they will not win. So the few US dollars that remain are they stealing all. Then they dump it like red dollar on the market. Now, economic econ econ show that when you have, a dollar you have, you got a few grants me, and two or three persons selling grant in the market, the price will go up. Because everybody won't buy that grant right? So we have just four US dollar remaining now. So now the rate going up. As the rate is going up, prices going up, right? Yes. So it means we're getting poorer. The money that you should use to buy five cup of rice can only buy two cup of rice now. Before you actually you not even buy one cup of rice, people will be suffering. You see how wicked they are? They don't care. Then they tell you, y'all give us second time, everything will be all right. Governors are not marching. That knowing what to do and caring for the people that you govern. The poor Benny has a job that they got money machine at their houses to, yes. to pay you well down. I just saw one house right behind those time in Monrovia. I said, who Benny is that going to pay you? They said that the president put them five story building. This kind of time. Why people suffer? They don't care. So my people, me, Southland, Bunny, Dolo, we are, all of us are making sacrifices to change your story for the You can get caught from Monroe. Let that go, go past. It is not that the security people don't want to do their job. The people who lead us. They, look, this the, the good not coming by by the farm road between here and Guinea or Africa or the The goods are coming through airport. They are coming through big big cars coming through the checkpoints. And when the DEA people. The police force tap them. We are the one that read and say they can't come. Let that vehicle pass. Let that go enter the country. Let go enter the country. They. That's true, my son. They say that my interest. That my interest. That my interest. If you want your job, you better let that. So they don't care if the government or not want jobs to be in the country will not be here. For our children that are making crazy alone, mothers don't vote for them. You suffer, you send your children to school. Some of the children in the, in the street who are fed up by drugs are college graduates. Well educated. They are now addicted to drugs. If the drugs were not here, they would not be addicted to drugs. We want to rehabilitate them. As a lawyer, we will make sure we we'll rehabilitate them we will prosecute the poor and bring it to We will rehabilitate them. We will give them skills. The training school will open. We will send them there. We will give them preference. You rehabilitate them. No drug around for them to take. You give them skills. They re enter society as productive citizens to contribute to the development of Liberia. 
So my people, all I can tell you, they will say, Kanzo, don't let you get money. True, I don't have money. But it is not money that you need for leadership. What you need is wisdom. Yeah. Knowledge and wisdom. Love of country, love for people. Being a proud person who got shim fees. I want Liberia to compete with other countries in Africa. One country called Botswana, no sea coast there. It's a landlocked country. They get only one mineral, diamond. It is richer than Liberia because the government, the president there have been good to their people. They have the best roads, they have the best hospitals, they have the best schools. Everything good in their country. Because the leaders have been honest to manage the resources that God put there for everybody. Here, the people are too wicked. They are too wicked. They are too wicked. So those wicked people, you should have the wisdom of Jinwar Badi, your first superintendent. The wisdom of all the chiefs. Chief Bofer, even the owner who died recently, Chief Bauer. Your people were sensible. Your mother allowed you, Bokani citizens, my uncles, my aunts, to be treated like chicken that they can throw rice to, to catch. Or the billet, the billet boat that you got to give cassava leaf to. Tell them you lied to us. What are you going to do better than what you have not done? You know they say the fresh food, the not food, the second food, the real food. Because you are food before and you allow yourself to be food now, then you are the real food. Because maybe you taught the person to mend one. Yes. yes. Like we does not need this kind of government. Because the way they are governing is the way our children are thinking. You ask my children and I say, I want to be president so I can steal my own money. I want to be a representative so I can get my own money. No child wants to work with company now. They want to trade. Right now, 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 because of the level of stealing. At least you are talking about two or three representatives here before. Most of the legislative seats in Liberia now they get up to 20 candidates. Because last year, the Lord Mayor got 30,000 now each free US dollars. The year before, they got 30,000 now each free, 60,000 now per, per person. And they lie to themselves and give themselves money. They say the reason we're getting the money is so we go to our country. When the police say they want to pump, they will do it. When they say they want market building, we we'll build it. When they want to say they want school, they want it, we we'll do it. Have they done it? No. Have they told you they got 30,000 now each for you? No. Uh -huh. So, they, they take it 30,000 now, now. When you let them now, they will double it to 60,000 per year. Taking the money. Then there will be no money for school, for uh, our health system, for food production. One of the things I want to do, and uh, they will benefit from Kali, Limba, and the, uh, 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 Lufa, the agriculture plan. We want to use machines to grow more rice in Liberia. <laughs> Colors and whole can feed us anymore. They cannot make up produce our food. In other countries, they use machines. We want to use tractors and other farming machines to produce big, big rice farms in the 15 countries so that Liberia can be self sufficient and then bring them up to export rice. Right? This country has yes. the capacity to export rice in two, three years and generate money. But in order to do it, you have to use the money to buy machines and not put it in your pocket. This is what we will do. This is what me, Simon, Money, Delivia, everybody sitting up there intend to do. So we can change my first story. We cannot allow our poor to be hungry every day, price of rice going up. But God gave us that kind of wish.
and Oka and Hongo in Liberia and Hongo in Liberia. You don't see it on the ground. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the plain truth. The council has told you, and it's not about where you come from, which county, which, which tribe. Speaking to you, I'm from Southeast, I'm from Rewaji, that's where the president comes from. But it's not about where you come from, it's about the interest of the country. Some of us that have gone out, that went to school out, that have seen things. Liberia is, is far behind. I don't see any sector in that world, whether education, whether agriculture, or anything that, you, that is worth boasting of. Everything is down, I don't need to tell you. Yeah, I have a friend of the broom when I was coming. He and I from the same southeast. He saw the broom. He was laughing at me. Oh, you two will sweep until you tired of sweeping. So I asked him, and the other people and uh, they held the broom and they were saying uh, the the government not doing well and they not building roads. What about the other past government? And I said, look, this is this is serious thing. So I told him, when was the last time you went home? Southeast, say I'm, I, I don't go there, and I will go there next month. This, these are serious issues we are seeing. So they will come to you, that the councillor, why they will tell you about councillor Dongle is that, eh, councillor Dongle is qualified, he will make a good president, but he's poor, he doesn't have money. He has never been about money. Our problem has been the lack of character in leadership. And that's why he has. This is why he stays the tallest among all of them. So they will bring their money. They will, it's in fact, it's not their money. It's our money. The taxes we pay and money from our resources. So thank you very much. I have a lot of friends from Bon County. And as a teacher, I teach a lot of people from Bon County. So I know the better people are wise. So I know you will vote wisely. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.
socialement, là, bon, les sites de you. Anything you tell God, là, il les sites de you. That's what the song is saying. Right now, we will call on the director of livestock and fishery at the Central Agricultural Research Institute, Kari, yes. Dr. Joma. Nyakwe yeah. Joma will be here to give a short statement. What do you say? Good afternoon to all. I don't think I need to further introduce myself. I'm sure almost everybody in here have followed my story at Kerry for the past three years. I know there are witnesses here. First, let me introduce myself again. I'm Yankwe Joma, Dr. Joma, and I've been with the Central Agricultural Research Institute for more than 10, 11 years. You heard my story, what I've been through, what I've been stood, what I've pressed here. And I did that in Bon County. Secondly, I do not see myself as a tribesman. I'm from Lofa County. I see myself first as a Liberian and somebody wanting to transition from where we are to another. I will tell you, I work with the government of Liberia, I work with Kerry. I'm standing here today. If you are on the fence, out of because of fear, murder or being killed or something, take a decision, make a decision that will benefit you and future generations to come. All too often, Liberian people have said, well, the government will do this to me, and this will happen to me, and so at the end of the day, all the fear will make the wrong decision. I'm not afraid. I've never been afraid. The only time I will be afraid is I'm doing the wrong thing. And I've stood for the right thing. Many people here in Bond County that work with carry that shall be laid off a fire, I stood. Dr. Joma that stands here today with Jehovah in heaven, because a lot of politicians have said this, and when they get to public office, it changes. But I tell you this, with Jehovah above, regardless of politics, if the team that Dr. Joma represents or those that Dr. Joma follow and love, there will be a transition in our lives and our country. All too often, people shy away from doing the right thing. And so at the end of the day, there is a problem. So I'm here for Kari, and I'm in support of Councillor Bogolo. You know what I stand for. Yeah. Follow me. Let's transition. Believe me, Liberia is wealthy, Liberia is rich. The problem has been governance. I live there alone on my compound. Yeah, anybody can come there, up to you. But at least I've stood for the right thing, I've persevered, and Jehovah God will see me through. So, y'all, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Councillor Bogolo, and your team for coming. May God bless you all. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Uh, we will call on uh, Mr. Niamba and that of the Raving of the Concerned United Methodist Church, the senior pastor, Raving there, to come on stage after the song from Mr. Niamba, then Raving there can do our benediction for four days a day. But please, before that, after that time now, last on the TV from Calvary will be coming in though. Ain't no water come on? Amen. Amen. You don't know the rest? The rest will be coming from the back there. Okay, so the two of you are welcome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if I don't know what to do, what then the baby got away, who went up with Benny? Oh, now. Wow, Bagaboga, I like you.
mà nói nhậu Cô bà cũng là hai chị nghe là thì Gần cái giá mua hôm nay, cái giá mua nhà là cái ăn cái ăn mà mà À bé cái cái Số hôm nay các bạn thương nhà bà qua ra hồi hồi qua chí cái Ăn cái bê như bắp Đã có cái ra kẻ Với ra bà cũng có Qua ra hồi mà đi qua về đi chơi ấy
Heavenly Father, we say thank you for this day. We thank you for all of us that who have come together thinking about Liberia to see Liberia to be different from the Liberia we have now. We can't do it by ourselves because we know that you love the country naturally what we have here. When people who are in different countries who can hear about these things, when they live a good life with us, and people are thinking, you know that. You, you get a half of every man in your hand. The rightful people who are thinking the rightful way for Liberia will pray that you put them into position. Because what's suffering us is just the matter of leadership. But we need good leaders from you. Thank you as we are here. We just see one another. But you see the inside of us. You know everything. You are everywhere. You have every power. We need when you take your honor as we are going home. Give us safely in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Thank you so much.